I am officially launching Money Crypto Stocks on my podcast. Yes, this is what I want to do for a long time. Storytelling session, longer version to help family investors on the go with stories, compelling experience shared with people around the world. So enjoy the very first episode and I hope you like it. Hello, welcome back to the very first episode of Money Crypto Stocks. This is where the host, myself, Dr. Alex Ko, you can call me Alex, is here to present you a podcast version of my journey and interviews and stories that I want to share with you guys, predominantly about family investing, money, crypto and stocks, about making money on the site so that you don't have to rely on your day job. Because remember, when I grew up in the 80s and 90s, my dad always told me, if you work hard, you make money. You make money, you pay a roof over your head, you get savings, you have a good life. But you know, my generation grew up in 2000, 2001, going forward, things are different. There's so many financial crash. Economy can't seem to sustain itself no matter where you are. The fiat currency, the money keeps getting smaller and smaller. Things are getting more and more expensive. Education is more expensive. Food is more expensive. Travel is more expensive. And the list goes on. Our bill keeps increasing. For some bizarre reason, we need Netflix, Amazon Prime, and we need to pay for things online. And it just goes on. Our bills never stop paying. So that's why I thought that it'd be a good idea for me to start a podcast just to share my journey and what I see around the world today. And hopefully, we attract like-minded people, strong, like-minded people are willing to wanting to do the change. So there you are. This is me, the origin, unscripted, raw. And before you go, you can actually watch this on my YouTube channel, Family Investment. But then this is predominantly driven by Money Crypto Stocks on you know, podcasts on Spotify or Apple. But the real topic from a very origin first episode is to talk about how I got into investing. When I say investing, financial investing. Remember, if you guys do know me, I am an engineer. I work my butt off through high school, through university, got my PhD. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what engineering I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to get into the oil and gas. Why? Because that's where the money is. You know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, what is the biggest company in the world? What was the Google back then? It was Shell. It was BP. That was the rock star company. You travel in business class, you travel everywhere, you fly your helicopter on a platform. It was like the GI Joe of any jobs. But it's just my luck. Work my ass off. Got my you know first class degree, got my scholarship to do my PhD. I polished myself as much as possible to get into the oil and gas. I got myself in. I worked for not number one, number two, but I worked for the third best company in the world to tell. And it came when I worked, it's just financial crisis, oil crisis after one another. Things keep crashing, house price keeps crashing. For some bizarre reason, no matter how much I work, the money can't just keep up. And that's when I started investing. I started investing, but the real, the ultimate reason that I started investing is when I pick up my first born child, you know, 2012, when I pick up my firstborn child, beautiful little girl, an angel from above, in my hands. And my wife asked me, we've got one of the most beautiful child in the world. Like every mother would think so, you know. She says, Alex, can we give her everything? You know, that's the first thing she asked me. And what do you do as a dad? You go home, take a calculator out and says, can we send her to the best school? Can we buy her the best? When I did the maths, it was impossible. And what made matter worse, you know, I couldn't get our first baby pram. That's how bad I was at planning. I couldn't afford a push pram. I didn't realize a push pram cost 500 pounds, a brand new one. I wasn't going to go for a second-handed one. You could get second-hand one for like 50 quid. I'm not going to buy a 50 quid for my firstborn child. I bought a $500 one. And that what lasted nine months and <laughs> we got a really cheap one after that. That, you know, I worked out, we couldn't afford baby pram. The credit card bills keep increasing, keeps piling up. Even I took a job to go offshore, you know, to get additional, you know, 20, 30 grand a year. And still, I couldn't keep up. Things were so expensive, so expensive. And I thought, what should I do? And I go back to the roots. I go, go invest. I heard about this guy called Warren Buffett. Read his book, Go Invest. 
that's when I started taking things seriously. Because back then, before my child was born, I was doing index investing, you know, buying index, trying to beat the market by seven, eight, nine percent. That helped. But I wasn't serious. I was like, if I have 50 quid, I'll put it in. If I've got 150 quid, that's safe again. I put it in. Oh, wait a minute. Next month, we've got a holiday. Let's take it out. Let's just spend it. So I wasn't serious about it. I was knowing about it. I was taking it, wasn't taking it seriously as a proper game or a proper way forward for future planning. It's only when I pick up my daughter. So that's when I started stock picking. I started reading. I started meeting people. I started talking to people. And that opened my whole world up. You know the day where you go to work, you think that you're just working with Joe Bloggs, John across the road, Sarah, uh, the table across. But when you start knowing about investing, it opens up your world. You don't realize that some people who works behind the desk, they've been investing for years, they know things about, you know, even property investment or antique car vehicles investment or even um, antique collectibles. It opens up the whole, you speak to different people about value capture, about appreciation of goods. Remember the day where I thought, you know, buying a comic book or a basketball card, they were appreciate in value, buy a fancy stamp, the first edition, and release them, I would get a million dollars at it. Now, that is all garbage, you know, stuff to tell you. It's one in a million chance you'll find a gem like that. So it's only investing that secures you, you know, S&P 500, that, that 8 9%. But if you pick the right stock, you could double it, you could triple it, you could maintain 10 20%. If you hit 20%, you're great. If you maintain it above, 10, 11, 12%, you are good. If you go below that, you crap, stick to your index. That's where I started investing. That's why I started reading, meeting people, talking to people, the stories, people who retired early. Like I mentioned, the man I met at work, Dan, he retired with Netflix stock. He kept buying the dip. He was nuts. He kept buying the dip just because his Sony remote control says Netflix in 2009 on his flat screen TV. He says Netflix would be the next big thing. He started buying Netflix every day. Financial crisis came, he buy Netflix. And when he hit 35, he retired. He just called it quit on the day because he made a million dollars on his stock and he started day trading, option trading, and things goes on. And he was an engineer as well. Inspired me. He was younger than me. Inspired me. Hit me really hard. I'm glad I captured his time when he was still at work, when we were working as colleagues. And then world opened up. I met people who invested in Apple stocks back at university. Like, when I look back at university, what was I doing? I was basically getting drunk, Takeaways at 10 o'clock, getting drunk, more drunk, different houses, you know, that goes on and so on. But that fella took his student loan and bought Apple stocks. Why? Because he loved his iPod generation 2, iPod 2. He was like saying iPod 2 could hold so many songs, you know, and then one of the click wheel back in 2005. He used his student loan that he had left to work, bought Apple stocks and kept buying when he was at work. He kept buying Apple stocks. He said, oh, the iPhone came out and buying Apple stocks. And when I spoke to him back around about 2012, you know, we were drunk at a bar, a Christmas party. You know, I asked him, I said, honestly, how much Apple stocks do you own? He says, if I wanted to send both my child, both my kids, my two girls to university in Harvard University just now, I could send them for four years with accommodation fully paid. And this was coming from a guy who was 33, 34 years old back then. And, you know, his child was like, three and one <laughs> and that's how much money he made it was a hobby to him he saved money he made a discipline out of it he was going to job just for fun if you get sacked so what if he was given a redundancy package he would take it but he secured himself he invested early he made it well for him buy good quality stocks and hold them never look back hold them like an nft like a trophy that is inspiring that is what i like you know as people that i spoke to Okay, back to my journey. So I started investing, started stock picking, learning about option trading. You have to find your way. I found my way. I knew I like a particular stock. Biopharmaceutical stock wasn't for me. I started semiconductor tech stocks. It just correlates with me. And even to into investing, I even quit video gaming. I don't know if anybody knows about me, but I grew up in the generation of Nintendo, you know, of Super Mario. I played video games from the age of like six all the way through university, through high school and everywhere. And because of stock investing, I thought, man, I cannot afford to video game three to four hours every night and read and learn about stocks. So I quit video games. I 
release myself of three hours every single night. To release myself of three hours, you know, time for my kids and stuff, three hours. And I started reading, I started blogging, I started on Quora, I got an audience, and now I end up here on YouTube. And that was my side hustle. Why? Why do I do this? Why do I study? I share. Because it comes to point in investing. It's not enough. When I said not enough, you know, your, your salary, your savings per month, you can cut down on coffees, you can cut down on fuel, you can cut down on stuff. But at the end of the day, you and me, for the last 10 years, salaries hasn't increased. There's only so much you can invest with your salaries every single month. So I realized that if I went on investing this way at a late age of like 31, 32, I would not make a million dollars until I turned like 52, 50, I need 20 years before I could get a million dollars. With what I was, you know, basic maths, you save $200 a month, you compound, you know, 10, 12 percent. It would take me 52 to 55 if I was lucky to get a million dollars. It was like, that's not even close enough for retirement. So that's when I started side hustling. You know, side hustling, make some side income, work on fiber just to make it work. Because it, it makes me cringe. It makes me really cringe that, you know, I've seen folks on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, you know, folks who start saying, oh, I'm going to go from zero to a million dollars. Here I go. I'm going to start with 10,000 pounds or $10,000. I'm going to trade. I'm going to work my way up and see if I hit a million dollars. That is un garbage. It will not happen unless you are high frequency trader with five different trades happening at one time simultaneously a full-time job you're not going to do it part-time buying apple stocks buying you know unless you bought bitcoin in 2012 and make 60,000 times profit it's a different story you cannot buy stocks and passively buy and become millionaire with ten thousand dollars that's ultimate garbage you have to put in money every single month. You have to increase your savings, hard and cash, year by year. If they say you save 10 grand, you invest 10 grand. Next year, you have to save 20. The year after that, you have to save 30. The year after that, you save 40. Why? Because every single year, the more you learn, the more you experience, the more you read, the more you take on, the more you want to invest. It becomes an addiction. You have to raise capital. It's like a business. When your business gets big, what do you do? You raise capital. When your investment thesis gets stronger, you raise capital. So for whoever out there reading up on how you turn 10 grand to a million dollars, unless you are a high frequency trader who take a severe risk full time, you may make it. But if not, you know, brush it aside. Just focus, focus, focus. That's why I've seen young people nowadays drawing charts, support lines, all sorts of charts. They can draw anything out of the moon. I just look at them saying, you know, you spend so much time looking at the charts and high frequency data at 15 minute data or four hour data. Why don't you use your energy and go out and side hustle? Take photography, for example, you know, like my, my piano teacher, he, he makes about like 70, 80 bucks an hour. Online maths tutor for S6, you know, secondary six. They make about 50 pounds per student. And if they've got 10 students, they can make 500 uh, pounds a day for that session of work, do their homework, you know, plus in between one hour between the front and back. They can make $500 a day for a class. And if they can repeat and cycle, they can make a couple of grand a week. They can make it systematically. So why don't you focus your energy to make money, then select what stocks you want to buy on the dip. All you have to do is buy the dip. Sell high, buy the dip. You don't have to sit and monitor them every day. You have to focus on the saving. So if you focus on the side hustle, streamline your business, you make it work even easier for you. When you have capital, you want to run a business, investing as a business, you make it even a lot easier for you. So young people listening to this, focus on making money, investing, secondary. You have to do your homework. Don't let it down. But each year when you go into investing, you need to get greedy. You need to get bigger. You need to think bigger. Capital increase. So folks trying to save from salary every single year, every single month, you save 100. If you don't increase it for the next 10 years, you're still saving 100 months. It doesn't work for you unless you started at the age of 15 and all the way to 25. Then the compounding effect will come after 25, 35, 45. It's a whole different story. So how I started investing? I started for a genuine reason. My child was born. I worked in maths. It didn't work out. My job didn't work out for me. The economy never was against my favor. I have to find way beyond me to make it work. 
capital runs low, I have a side hustle. The story goes on. I'm still here. I'm not fully retired from a 9 to 5 job, but I'm closer to where I want to be than I was 7 years ago, 8 years ago, 9 years ago. So plans change, things shift to attain. I'm getting older, hopefully I'm getting wiser, but I'm getting closer to the goal I want to be. So hopefully this inspires everybody. It gives you a goal and ambition. Give yourself a reason to attain what you want. Don't just start investing saying, I'm going to start investing because Alex said he's going to hit a million dollars at this age. No, start investing for a reason. It's like you're going to the gym. You know, you don't go just walk up to the gym and lift some weights or you don't just tell yourself that I'm going to lose 20 kilos because I am overweight. No, it gives you a reason. You want to lose weight to be keep fit. Or you're a young person, you want to lose weight to look attractive so you can attract somebody attractive from the opposite sex. Or you want to lose weight because you had some uh, family experience that somebody passed away from a certain disease that really shocked you. You lost someone at a very young age that really shocked you and you want to make sure that you keep yourself healthy. Or you want to save animals because when you were young, you lost an, a, a pet dog or pet cat that was really close to you to an accident and you do want it to happen and you want to spend your additional extra time to help animals. Give yourself that reason. Nobody lose weight instantly. Everybody does something for a reason. Make it into a habit. Don't motivate yourself because motivate runs out of fuel, but habit keeps you going. Habit turns it into a daily routine. That's what you should do for investing as well. For me, it's a day job, like a day job, but I love it. I love reading about the news. I love the analysis. I love speaking to somebody, even if it's somebody at a taxi rank or a taxi stand and he knows about a stock or a crypto that I've been reading up. Man, I could speak to that person, man, woman, or even if it's an alien for hours because that's what I love to do. So find that passion, find a reason for investing, keep the fuel going, raise capital, raise your game, learn read stay hungry that's what investing is about if you want to make it work your side job with passion make it work for you that's how i want to share off today that's how i want to kick off episode one and hope to share more with you hope to bring you more experts more stories to deliver to you to inspire you guys that's my 17 minutes up i hope you have a good day please remember to like and subscribe on money crypto stocks on your favorite podcast or come to my youtube channel family investment to watch more like this Thank you very much. Have a good day. And I guess I have to go to bed and replan for the next exciting podcast. Thank you. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.